In these next two problems, we're going to be using Newton's second law in order to solve two problems. This first one we're going to go through is going to combine our equations of kinematics from the last two chapters with our Newton's second law. So in this problem, we have an airboat, these boats that kind of float on top of, of water, an airboat with a mass of 350 kilograms, has an engine that produces a net horizontal force of 770 newtons if we account for everything, including forces of resistance. So the first part of the problem, just with this information, all that we're gonna do is find the acceleration of the boat. For part A, we're looking for what is the acceleration. And that's, um, that's just pretty simple. We know that we've got Newton's second law, which has that the force is equal to mass times acceleration. Here, we only have forces acting in the horizontal direction. So our acceleration is gonna be in the horizontal direction. So we can say then that the force is equal to mass times acceleration. We've got the force from the engine, we've got the mass, of our airboat, and we just need to solve this for acceleration. It's that easy. We divide both sides by mass, so our acceleration is equal to the force from the airboat's engine divided by the mass of the airboat, and so that's just 770 newtons divided by our 350 kilograms, and so then our acceleration is just equal to 2.2 meters per second squared, okay? That's part A. <laughs> In part B, starting from rest, assuming our airboat starts from rest, so our initial velocity is zero meters per second, how long does it take the airboat, T equals question mark, to reach a speed of 12 meters per second, okay? So we already found the acceleration of our airboat. If we're gonna assume that our airboat's starting from rest, initial velocity is zero meters per second, and it's going to accelerate over some distance until it reaches a final velocity of 12 meters per second, we need to figure out what was the time it took for this airboat at this acceleration right here to go from zero to 12 meters per second, okay? So at some later time, we're over here at a new point, here, this will be point A. At a later time, we're over here at point B, okay? And that whole time, it was this acceleration that was acting on the boat. So we use our equations from kinematics. Look back at our equation sheet. Look for an equation where we know the acceleration, initial velocity, final velocity, and we're just solving for time. And that equation is V final is equal to our initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So I wanna solve this for time. I subtract our initial velocity over to the other side. So V minus our initial velocity equals acceleration times time. Divide both sides by the acceleration. So time is equal to V minus V naught over acceleration. So our final velocity was 12 meters per second. Our initial velocity was zero meters per second. We divide by our 2.2 meters per second acceleration, meters per second squared acceleration. And then we find that the time it takes us to go from A to B is 5.45 seconds. Okay, so that's part B. After reaching the speed of 12 meters per second over here in part B, the pilot is going to turn off the engine on the boat and then our boat is going to drift to a stop over a distance of 50 meters. Now, once you turn off the engine, the only way this boat can drift to a stop is if there is a resistance force. This resistance force, it could be a combination of friction and drag that's causing our boat to slow down to a stop. That resistance force is going to be opposite the direction of motion of our boat as it's coming to a stop. So if we read that sentence again, 
After reaching the speed of 12 meters per second, the pilot turns off the engine and drifts to a stop over a distance of 50 meters. We want to find the resistance force that slowed down this boat to a stop, assuming that this resistance force is constant the entire uh, time that the boat is coming to rest. Okay, so what is this resistance force? That's what we need to solve for. So I've redrawn our problem here, starting from part B over here, where the velocity of our boat was 12 meters per second. This will be the initial velocity for the final stage of our problem here. And I'm going to say that the position there at point B is going to be zero meters in the horizontal direction. And then we come to a stop over 50 meters, so our final position in the x direction is going to be 50 meters. And we're coming to rest, so our final velocity is zero meters per second. Okay, so in order to find this resistance force that's slowing down our boat, we are going to have to use F equals ma. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So in this case, this force that's resisting the motion, slowing us down, is our resistance force. So the resistance force is equal to the mass times the acceleration, okay? So we know the mass already. That's the 350 kilograms of our boat. And we need to figure out this acceleration. We figure out this acceleration through our kinematic motion equations. We have initial velocity, initial position, final velocity, final position over here. And so we need um, a, a, an equation from our equation sheet that has all four of those, and the only thing left to solve for is acceleration. So if I look at my equation sheet, let's see what would work for us. We've got this equation here. V final squared minus V initial squared equals 2A times our final x position minus our initial x position. So if we're starting at point B, I can say that my x position there is going to be 0. I can choose 0 to be wherever I want. And we're coming to rest, so our final velocity is going to be 0. So now we've got minus our initial velocity squared is equal to 2a times the final x position. Well, I solve this equation for a, and I find that a is equal to minus v naught squared over 2x. So if I plug in those numbers, I've got minus, and then my initial velocity was 12 meters per second squared, or 12 meters per second squared, there we go, divided by 2 times our distance was 50 meters. Okay, so then you see we've got a minus sign on that acceleration. So then our acceleration is equal to minus 1.44 meters per second squared. We want a negative acceleration. We're decelerating, actually, because our boat is coming to rest from some non-zero initial velocity. So our boat is decelerating. We want that negative sign on the acceleration. So we take that value for acceleration and put it into our equation for F equals ma. So we've got the mass of the boat times minus 1.44 meters per second squared, okay? And then we find that the resistance force that allows this boat to come to a stop is equal to minus 504 newtons. It's negative because that tells us the direction of this force. This force is acting opposite the direction of motion. If we're moving this way, that force has to act opposite in the direction of motion in order to make us come to a stop.